Good morning, uh, Dr. Boyd Cox. Um, I am just thrilled to have you here on the show today and, uh, and to pick your brain and, uh, and have you share with our audience. Thank you for being with us this morning. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I am delighted to have been asked and to be available to be here with you this morning. So I'm really Excellent. looking forward to time together. Excellent. 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 Well, let's get into uh, some of the things that I want to talk to you today about. First, can you share with my audience a little bit about your background and uh, tell us about the journey that led you into the ministry? Ah, so I am, um, I'm a product, a native of Alabama. Okay. There and um, graduated high school there and um, came to Georgia later in life and um, went to um, Mercer University and got a bachelor's and went back a couple of years later and got a Master of Divinity degree and then took some time off and went to ITC and got a Doctor of Ministry degree. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. Mm -hmm. I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm like what the, what the millennials call a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> yes. um, and so I, you know, it's, it's interesting how I ended up in ministry because I'm I'm a natural, I'm an introvert, and I know that I'm a social extrovert. You would oh, think wow. that I just blossom, you know, yeah. but I'm a social introvert. I'm a situational introvert. Wow. Uh, situational extrovert, yes, yes, yes. situational extrovert. Yes. And I never like talking in front of people. I never like talking. Really? Not, not, you know, when I taught Sunday school, I didn't like teaching, the standing in front of people. Wow. Um, uh, my husband and I moved to North Carolina and I started working for a pharmaceutical company. They, um, um, I was in HR and, you know, the day after I got there, they said, okay, so you're going to be flying to New York next week, but to Pearl River, New York next week, because we want you to become the train, the trainer. And I'm oh. like, that means standing in front of people. I don't <laughs> do that. But anyway, yeah. God was preparing me even then yes. um, to be able to, to stand in front of people. And uh, ironically, one day in 1998, I knew like in 1995 that I was being called to the ministry, but I was like, yeah, you know, I had to call somebody else. Yes. <laughs> so one day I had a, my girlfriend, Cassandra, had invited me to speak to a group of women in Alabama. So I mm -hmm. went back. Mm -hmm. To speak to those women and I and at this time we had moved back to Georgia and I we lived in Stone Mountain and so I um was was two minutes from home after right. after I'd spoken and it was like Holy Spirit sat in the car with me mm -hmm. and started speaking to me wow. about calling me out mm -hmm. and and that I'm to be calling me out like an evangelist and I'm to be like a midwife and everywhere wow. I go someone is supposed to give birth to their purpose. Wow. I had never never witness or experience something like that and when really? I got I was two minutes from my house when I yes. got and I remember it like it was yesterday when I got to the garage and walked into the house I was shaking like a leaf on the tree wow. I was weeping and sobbing and yeah. sobbing and my husband was like what is going on what yeah. happened what's going on yeah. and, and you know, I really could not even verbalize what the Lord had said to me because not only did I hear it with my ears, yeah. but I also heard it with my heart. Oh my! Ah, uh, when I tell you that was a life-changing moment. Yes. And even then, I was afraid because yes. I didn't know what it looked like. And and growing up Baptist, uh, when I when I, when we lived in North Carolina, it was the first time that I had heard of a woman. Not the first time I've heard of a woman, but somebody who was yeah. actually recognized as a pastor. Sure. She was the pastor's wife, but she was also referred to as pastor. Right. Uh, and so I, you know, I didn't know my own concept of what I thought about women in ministry. Sure. Because being in a Baptist church, you know, you can, uh, uh, right. you can yeah. cook fried chicken yes. and make sure the pastor's if you can iron, you can bring water, yes, you're cold. Yes. Nobody uh, invests time for you into these things. And eat. My, my father was a minister. Right. Sister. And so when I, I had this encounter, when I told my father that I was being called into ministry to establish link. And even when I had connected to a church here in Georgia and the pastor said to me, uh, 
uh, you're going to, he says, you're going to do your initial sermon on the, I think it was the fifth Sunday in April. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're going to go through a wilderness period and then you're going to preach your initial sermon. Yeah. And so I'm still waiting for this wilderness experience. <laughs> I'm still waiting for somebody to take me through this. Help me come out of the wilderness. The children of Israel went through the wilderness and somebody led them out. Right. Okay. Right. So help me understand this wilderness and so still not having the the full benefit of knowing what that experience yeah. was but I I just began to dive into the Bible I didn't go to divinity school until right. much much later after right. my calling and uh, I just began to dive into the Bible and pray and to listen to God wow and that's how I how I got into ministry that's amazing. Um, what I um, have served in several churches Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, I served in several churches. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was at Conyers uh, under the leadership of mm -hmm. and I began to hear those trips for the last eight years. And uh, the pandemic just kind of took something out of me, and I yes. kind of felt my season was there. So I resigned uh, last year in November, and I, I preached my last sermon there wow. as their pastor. Wow. in um december on december 31st is that right 2020 yes yeah. so wow. i wow yeah yeah amazing um yeah let's see i've got some i've got a little bit of waking up here can you hear me 